The Lord be with you. you. Welcome to worship this morning. It's good to see you all here. Welcome to those who are joining us from home or wherever you may be viewing. We're glad that you took the time to be here with us. And we don't have much in the way of announcements. Our change for change is continuing. But I did want to say a big thank you for all of those who helped organize the uh, summer picnic. It seemed like everyone had a very good time. Um, Thank you to Cheryl and Buddy for uh, taking care of the bingo part of it. (laughs) Very good job. So I'm sure everybody was blessed and we're always blessed by the food uh, and know that those things are provided originally by the hand of our Lord. Please rise for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, Come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, Have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God. And for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Let us pray. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth, that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. first reading comes from Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us all along, along all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Be to God. The psalm will be read responsibly. 
The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and God's ears are open to their cry. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the broken hearted and saves those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from everyone. God will be saved all their bones, not one of them shall be broken. Evil will bring death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. O second reading is from Ephesians. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you, there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? 
You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Alleluia. Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Now you see where what we have sung for so many Sundays, so many years, where it comes from. It comes from the confession of Simon Peter. Earlier this week, someone was looking at the bulletin and they said, Pastor, is this the right thing? Because I think we're talking about the same thing we've been talking about for several Sundays, and it's true. It's the same story, but it's different, and perhaps today the message is the most important message. And I say that because there were some that were following Jesus. And Jesus said something that either they did not understand or that they did understand and didn't agree with. And they made a choice. And the choice that they made was to turn away from the Lord. It's an interesting thing when we teach the book of Genesis. I often ask people, in the story of the fall, what do you think the sin was that occurred in that moment? Many will say, well, Adam and Eve disobeyed God. Well, that's part of it, but it goes deeper. Because also Adam and Eve didn't trust God. And then it goes even deeper. Adam and Eve's love for God wasn't great enough. For when we truly love the Lord our God, we know that there is nothing that God will ever say to us or ask of us that is not good for us, that doesn't build us up. And even here in the scripture today, he was speaking the truth. And just because it sounded strange to their ears, they rejected it. But it's still the truth. You know, sometimes we walk away, and I notice things in the scripture. It tells us these people turned away. It doesn't tell us the future of those people. Because growing up as a kid, I was always taught this little phrase, God allows U-turns. Right? In the future, they may have changed their mind again. They may have turned around. They may have realized that walking away from Jesus was not the right thing to do. And the reason I point that out is because of how every one of our worship services began. It begins with confession and forgiveness. And every time that happens, we're doing that exact thing. We're saying, Lord, in some ways I've failed you. And in failing you, I've also failed myself and my friends and my family. And Lord, I confess to you my sins. And I ask you to make me clean. And give me the strength and the will, the knowledge, Lord, to be able to follow you faithfully. And what does God do? God forgives you. God gives you exactly what you need. He helps you walk. The truth is, as many of us as Christians, if I ask you, 
if you would ever turn away from God, what would your answer be? Of course not. (laughs) But our confession also speaks of things that we do unintentionally. For years as an adult, I stayed away from the church. I didn't go. I didn't want to be a part of the community. Do you know why? Because sometimes people who confess Jesus Christ don't really live like they believe what they confess. Right? Jesus had a word for it. Hypocritos. Right? Hypocrites. And I would look at the church and I was looking for people who would confess something and literally believe what they confess so much so that their lives look different. It makes me think of a sign I once saw in front of a church and it says, yes, the church has hypocrites in it. There's always room for one more. And the truth is, in that journey that I was taking, there was a hypocrite. And the hypocrite was me. And that's because I had forgotten that the Lord also taught to not judge. For when we judge, we are placing ourselves in the position of the only one who has the right to judge. And it says that there, the scripture says, there is one lawgiver and one judge. So who are we to judge? Because I can guarantee you, I am not the one who gave the law to Moses on the mountain. But I know the one who did. And God alone is our judge. We are not the judge of one another. And I was a hypocrite because I was judging people rather than loving people. Rather than forgiving people. Because isn't that the way that you come into any community at all? It's interesting to me that if people come into the church like I did, they see things they don't like, they don't forgive, they walk away. And yet there are other things they're involved in in their lives, right? You go to sports, games, and stuff your kids are playing, and people may be rude, they may say things that are wrong. Do you quit the games? Do you take the kids home? Why is it so easy for people to want to walk away from this gathering? Well, there's a reason. And it's the reason that I did. Because when people walk through a door of a church, they're looking for something different. Something that doesn't look like the rest of the world. They're looking for the kindness of Jesus Christ. They're looking for forgiveness. And people say, well, pastor, how do we get more people into the church? How will more people stay? It's not that hard. First of all, you can tell them three simple words. Come and see. Those three words come from our Savior. But also, when they do come, love them. Love them like Jesus. I will never forget something that happened years ago when we were on a pilgrimage out in the desert of New Mexico. And we went to the monastery of Christ in the desert. And I was there with one of my seminarian colleagues and friends, Jason. Now this synod refers to him as Brother Jason. 
because he became a monk. But when we walked, all, all monasteries, if you didn't know it, have gift shops. <laughs> so we walked into the gift shops and one of the brothers was there. And when we walked in, the brother turned around to us and gave us the biggest smile you've ever seen. And he welcomed us. And his actions were completely over the top of what we would consider normal. And my young friend blew his mind. And he turned to me and he said, did you see that? And I said, it's remarkable, isn't it? And he's like, yeah. And there was a plaque up on the wall, one of the rules of St. Benedict. And it's a simple rule I will share with you now and I will close this homily with it. It's some of the best advice you could ever get. St. Benedict said, whenever you greet someone, greet them in the same way that you would Jesus Christ. That's what had happened to us. That's what blew my friend's mind. And when you come into a church and all of the people are loving one another and loving God and welcoming everyone that comes, watch what the Spirit does. You will be amazed. Amen? Amen. Amen. Church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and the Lord of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need, kneeling as you are able. <clears throat> Holy God, you have the words of eternal life. Lead the church to put its trust in Jesus, the living word. Direct preachers, teachers, writers, and all the baptized in faithful speech and bold witness. Merciful God, we receive our prayer. Creator God, we in all creation are sustained by your word. We pray for all who remind us of our interconnectedness with all living things. Prosper the work of conf conservation organizations, ELCA advocacy, and local climate justice advocates. Merciful God. God of wisdom, as our nation navigates another election cycle, guide our leaders to act just, justly for the sake of the world. Bring about fruitful conversation among your people and bring about change where you see fit. Sustain all who serve on juries in their deliberations. Merciful God, God of restoration, bring healing and wholeness to all who cry to you. Where pain is sharp, bring a sense of comfort and relief. Where grief runs deep, bring your tender mercy. Care for those on our hearts, especially those on our prayer list and those we name out loud and silently. Merciful God, God of new life, protect students and teachers for a new school year. Bring an end to school shootings and cycles of violence. Move us to do all that is necessary to ensure a safe future for our children. Merciful God, God of every generation, we remember with thanksgiving all who have completed their baptismal journeys. Strengthen us in our baptismal callings to serve you faithfully until our journeys end. Merciful God, we lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift it to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, O mighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending Merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. And the night in which he was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, of, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come and eat at God's table. Thanks be to God.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Christ. Christ be to God.